Hello everyone, I am M.D. Mahfuz Rahman, a third year PhD student in the Department of Computer Science, Georgia State University. And today I will be presenting a paper called Dynamic Spectrum Management in 5G Wireless Networks, a real life modeling approach. So before starting our presentation, let's have a look at the details of the paper. So this paper was actually published in IEEE Infocom 2019 and the authors are from two different universities. Uh, one is National Technical University of Athens, Greece, and another one is University of New Mexico, USA. So let's have a look at the big picture of the paper. As we know that our communication systems have changed a lot, lots of IoT devices are coming into the picture of our communications and there is a great paradigm shift uh, from um, centralized systems to decentralized and ad hoc networks and in these decentralized and ad hoc networks users decisions and behaviors have changed a lot and uh, their interactions their interdependency have changed a lot and they have there is a great potential of prospect theoretic approach instead of expected utility theory because in expected utility theory, it is assumed that users' behaviors will be similar. They will be deciding similarly. But in, uh, in the light of prospect theory, uh, we can model heterogeneous um, users' um, behaviors. And we also need some mechanisms for uh, incorporating hybrid schemes and also efficient spectrum management is needed. This paper is basically trying to deal with these situations. So what are the main contributions of this paper? The main contributions of this paper is it offers a holistic approach uh, in the light of prospect theory for resource allocation problem. And uh, using prospect theory, the user's utility functions have been modeled in uh, different ways that reflects the real world scenarios and users users are generally um, um, have two types of tendencies toward risk and uh, reward under uh, probabilistic environments and these have been taken into account in this paper and the entire optimal resource allocation problem has been modeled as a non-cooperative cpr game and for solving this CPR game, the authors have proposed an algorithm called LUA. And this paper assumes that the underlying technology uh, is a non-orthogonal multiple access instead of orthogonal multiple access because non-orthogonal multiple access has several advantages over orthogonal multiple access. For example, non-orthogonal multiple access can offer enhanced spectrum efficiency and it can also reduce um, user latency uh, with uh, high reliability and also with the same amount of resources it is possible uh, to have massive connectivity uh, using um, non-orthogonal multiple access technology and there are also some uh, potentials uh, in 5g communications for example machine to machine communications and internet of things this is the generic network structures the this paper actually considers uh, for this work and that means uh, there will be two types of spectrum available to each user uh, one is unlicensed spectrum and another one is a licensed spectrum so as we can see from the figure that unlicensed bandwidth is huge uh, and the license bandwidth is very limited but license bandwidth is guaranteed uh, by isp or service provider but unlicensed bandwidth is is not guaranteed but it has high potentials uh, so that users can decide to transmit through this band and have greater utility so using a prospect theoretic uh, approach the user's utility can be modeled using these two fun these functions for example uh, this function actually considers two aspects of users attitudes one is toward gain and another one is toward um, loss uh, for example uh, zi is 
uh, representing relative user outcome for uh, user i and z naught is the reference point so it says that the overall utility will be this if the relative user outcome is greater than some reference point and the overall utility will be negative if the relative user outcome is less than or equal to this reference point so the user utility function can be modeled using this formulation where wl and wu are uh, corresponds to bandwidths of uh, licensed and unlicensed and n denotes the total number of users nl uh, represents the number of users who choose to use both bands and pi prime and pi double prime refers to licensed and unlicensed bandwidths uh, power and gamma i is the signal to interference plus noise ratio xi is the power investment in the unlicensed band and x tau is the aggregate power investments of all users in the unlicensed bandwidth using some notations we can uh, simplify the user utility functions like these uh, where r of xt is the rate of return function and uh, this is um, this is the gain term for the user and this is actually the loss term for the user so the entire problem can be modeled as an uh, optimization problem and the goal of this uh, paper is to maximize the utility for each user so expected utility function can be modeled as a, as this optimization problem and the purpose is to maximize this utility function for some xi and some for some model parameters and to solve this uh, optimization problem that means common pool resource game we can name this optimization problem as common pool resource game this uh, for solving this um, CPR problem, uh, the users, uh, the, this paper has assumed two uh, assumptions. For example, the users uh, all have the access to the available resources, and users are competing over these uh, scarce resources. And also, the users have some um, dilemma in investing. For example, um, users may think that there are lots of risk in investing in unlicensed bandwidths and also they may think that there uh, is a great chance to have large throughput in unlicensed bandwidths these are some useful parameters um, that will be used throughout this paper and some of them we have already seen for example uh, xi uh, is an investment to unlicensed bandwidth for the user i and nl is the number of users who have decided to transmit both in licensed and unlicensed bandwidth n is the total number of users we have already seen all of them but uh, uh, we, we all should know some of other parameters that might be useful um, to to understand in the, in the later slides for example best response i it means the when the aggregate investment of all users except i is x minus tau then what will be the response of the i user that means how much he or she will be willing to invest in unlicensed vendors ri is the user data rate and si is uh, it user uh, investment strategy set and s minus i prime bar it means the space of total investment excluding the player i and this paper uh, has several assumptions for example um, the failure probability p of x tau is a convex x tau we know that it is the aggregate of aggregate investment of all users in unlicensed bandwidth so um, it is clearly understandable that if the aggregate investment of all users increases uh, then the probability of failure will increase and the rate of return is monotonic uh, differentiable and positive 
because their rate of return cannot be negative. It must be within zero and one. And the strategy set of each player is defined as zero one. That means any value within these range. And the failure probability has been modeled using this uh, function. That means the probability of failure when the aggregate user investment is x tau is equal to x tau is square. And we have already seen the effective rate of return function. This term uh, actually represents the user's gain term and this term is representing the user loss term. So the effective rate of return will be uh, gain term minus loss term. So what will be the best response for the IT user? When the aggregate investment of all users except the IT user is X minus tau. This is the result of uh, solving this optimization problem. So this optimization problem uh, is saying when the overall aggregate investment of all users is x minus tau except the ith user what will be the response from the ith user and definitely the response of the ith user will be between zero to less than one it cannot be one because if it is one then the unlicensed band must collapse And the authors have proposed a theorem that ensures that their uh, formulation of optimization problem actually can achieve a pure Nash equilibrium point. And in this theory, they have shown that for each user, there is a choice for the best response so that the entire system the inter bandwidth unlicensed bandwidth will not collapse and uh, this paper also proposes some lemmas for example the best response uh, of the ith user will be single valued the best response of the ith user is continuous and the authors have also shown that the pure Nash equilibrium point for this formulation is unique. That means there is only one way in which this pure Nash equilibrium point can be achieved. The best response is decreasing because uh, when the aggregate uh, investment of all users will be increasing, the response from the next user will be decreasing. And, uh, and this non-cooperative CPR game will be actually implemented between internet uh, service provider uh, and users. And uh, at the beginning of this game, the users will set their topological and behavioral parameters and isp will be applying a successive interference cancellation technique um, for users to observe users transmissions and isp will collect all of the information from all of the users um, and will broadcast the ultimate results to all users and users will be deciding based on this broadcast and there can be two possible outcomes of this game. This game either will achieve pure Nash equilibrium point where all users manage to optimize their uh, transmission in licensed and unlicensed bandwidths. And another point is that another outcome can be um, CPR may fail from over exploitation. So this is the algorithm the authors have uh, proposed in this paper. As we can see, initially, the iteration has been set to one, collapse is zero, convergence is zero. That means there is no collapse, there is no convergence. And CPR size uh, means the unlicensed bandwidth size, as you can see. And then uh, initially, uh, it is randomly assigned the user behavioral um, properties and their investment. And then 
until convergence or collapse occur, some actions will be continuously happening. For example, um, you split the transmission power between licensed and unlicensed bandwidth and calculating utility using uh, some equation we have already discussed. The equation number was nine. And then Solving this optimization problem, each user will be deciding their investment to the unlicensed bandwidth. And if this current investment is greater than, if the resultant uh, investment is greater than their current investment, then the iteration, then the investment will be updated. The utility will be updated. And then a normalized aggregate investment will be calculated. Uh, and then compare that the unlicensed data rate of all users is exceeding the CPR capacity or not. If it exceeds CPR capacity, then there must be some collapse. And if it is uh, not changing too much, uh, then it has already conversed and the loop will exit. So this algorithm uh, called LURU algorithm actually offers um, uh, faster convergence to the pure Nash equilibrium point or identifies the collapse of the resource. Because um, as this algorithm will be um, executing uh, in um, distributed manner, uh, each user will be executing this algorithm in separately and uh, there must be parallel executions of the decisions and low data actions uh, is needed actually among the users. So the performance evaluation, what are the basic setup for this experiment? This experiment considers NOMA OLS technology and uh, the radius, the radi corresponding radius is 2.5 kilometer and 20 users have been considered for these uh, numerical experiments. Then 90% and, and the system's total bandwidth is set uh, for megahertz. 90% of uh, these four megahertz has been dedicated to unlicensed bandwidth and 10% has been dedicated to licensed bandwidth. And overall maximum uh, transmission power is 0.2 watts and all users split their transmission power into two bands, licensed and non-licensed bands. So as we can see, uh, uh, this paper actually considers two scenarios. Uh, one is called common user behavior and another one is called heterogeneous user behavior. So in common users behavior, uh, it is assumed that all users will be behaving similarly and it, it, it is considered that their uh, sensitivity parameter has been assumed as ki equal 20 and ai equal 0 0.1. Uh, as you can see from this um, figure that users uh, whose distance is intermediate from the base station that means not very close to the base stations and not very far from the base stations tend to utilize more unlicensed band. But the users who are very close to the base stations or very far from the base stations tend to use less the unlicensed bands. And as you can see, the corresponding power allocations among bands uh, per users, medium distance, significant interference uh, that means if the distance between uh, users and base station is medium then there will be significant interference and they will be affected by their own channel conditions so as you can see uh, the intermediate users from the base stations are using lots of unlicensed vendors and uh, the users who are close to the base stations or very far from the base stations tend to use more uh, licensed bandwidths. Because closer to the base, base station, mm, the 
channel conditions will be uh, superb and they will have uh, they will sense lower interference so this scenario is actually considering heterogeneous user behavior that means the uh, different users will be behaving differently uh, for example um, in this experiment uh, it has been considered that users 11 to 13 uh, will be uh, will increase their sensitivity parameters uh, while all other users will be maintaining their previous sensitivity parameter that means the user 11 to 13 has certainly decided to increase their uh, uses of unlicensed bands. So let's see what uh, is the resulting behavior. Oh, as you can see that um, the it has affected uh, the utility of all other users. As, as these three users have decided heavily to the unlicensed bandwidth so it has affected the other users licensed bandwidth that means the their utility from the licensed bandwidth has increased and another aspect is uh, changing loss aversion parameter ki and um, this experiment is actually considering uh, the user 8 and user 12. They have uh, decided to change their um, loss aversion parameter. One will be taking more risk and another will be taking less risk. That means the user 8 um, has no risk aversion and uh, for user 12, uh, risk aversion has been increased tenfold. So as we can see, that number eight user has no risk aversion it has jumped from um, 0.6 to 0.1 and um, for user 12 it has um, it has dropped from 0.9 to 0.4 so the corresponding utility uh, we can see uh, from the right side figure because uh, because of their risk, their utility will be increased or will be dropped based on the overall situation. So if the risk taking does not cause the CPR to collapse, then he or she will be gaining um, higher utility. But if it causes CPR to collapse, then he or she will not get any utility out of this investment. So as we can see uh, how this unlicensed band actually behave. So this is the mean sensitivity parameters. As we can see the as it is low, uh, the uh, unlicensed band would uh, stay active, but the utilization will be comparatively low. But if we can increase the sensitivity parameters, uh, this sensitivity actually means that the users are more willing to invest in unlicensed bandwidth but if we gradually increase we will be in, we will be having more utility out of this unlicensed spectrum but if we exceed some limit then this unlicensed band may collapse basically in this um, slide uh, in, in this figure the authors have compared expected utility theory and prospect uh, theory so as we can see that expected utility theory always instructs user to invest more in the cpr but prospect theory uh, always in, encourages users to behave realistically so that cpr will not collapse and they can have maximum utilization out of these uh, unlicensed bands so there is a lot of chance in expected utility theory that the band will collapse but in prospect theoretic uh, approach um, the 
unlicensed band, unlicensed spectrum will be used in a manner that it will remain active and the users will get higher throughput. So overall, uh, this paper has um, discussed efficient spectrum management technique in OLS network and how the unlicensed bandwidth can be efficiently used based on uh, varying user decisions. And instead of using expected utility theory, the uh, authors have proposed prospect theoretic approach that is more realistic um, to this problem. And the entire problem has been designed as a non-cooperative CPR game. And non-cooperative CPR game uh, is actually reflecting the, the realistic scenario. That means the users will not be behaving similarly. They might have varying decisions under varying conditions. And the authors have also shown that their solutions, uh, that means the optimization problem, can achieve a unique pure Nash equilibrium point or in um, otherwise it will uh, make the CPR fail. And this algorithm can achieve uh, distributed computation and can offer faster convergence. So as uh, our whole communication system has changed a lot, lots of devices are coming into the picture. So it will be a good idea to use uh, uh, these findings in realistic scenario and we can also um, work on the assumptions that this paper has assumed um, because the assumptions might have some pitfalls in itself so more and more research is actually needed for efficient utilizations of these unlicensed bandwidths. And uh, this is all. Any question uh, if you have, then you can write in the discussion board. I'll be happy to interact with all of you guys. Thank you.